Hi, welcome to another video by Fortune Buchholz of NotFortuneSchool.com. So as I promised before I left uh, around Thanksgiving to go to Germany so that I could visit the German Playing Card Museum, I promised you all that I would make the Star of Thirteen spread with uh, Chiro Marchetti's Fin de Siècle Kipper deck. Uh, of course, while I was away in Germany, I didn't really have the access to the good upload bandwidth like I had hoped, so forgive me for the delay in the making and uploading of this uh, video of the Star of Thirteen. I had a really wonderful time uh, in Germany. I was very pleased to be able to go to the German Playing Card Museum, which lies uh, not too far outside of Stuttgart, and I was very happy to finally be able to meet the um, curator and head archivist of the museum, the very famous card expert, uh, Dr. Annette Kuger. So uh, she's a lovely, lovely person, and she knows everything about cards. It's astonishing. She knows things about cards that even other people who I had always considered to be the ultimate expert in cards did not know. And um, meeting her was really the fulfillment of a dream, as well as spending several days there uh, in the archive of the German Playing Card Museum to research some of my own interests, not only the history of the Kipper, some things about the Lenormand. For example, I was able to hold a Koblenz uh, Lenormand, one of the earliest Lenormand decks, which is uh, not at all uh, like most, Norman, lo, most Lenormands that people are used to. Uh, I was also able to take a look at some very, very old German cards and to take a look at some very, 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 very old and extremely beautiful Italian uh, Tarot de Marseille cards from Trieste by Angelo Valla. So, um, I mean, that was just the experience of a lifetime. Everyone at the museum, as I said, uh, Dr. Kuger and her assistant, Danielle, are just the sweetest people alive. I wish them... Um, you know, all, all luck and all success, and I'm profoundly grateful for the opportunity to go to the museum to do my research and for the splendid hospitality of the museum and the German people. So I'm just really still t overwhelmed by that, and it'll take me, you know, a long time to really process all of the uh, deep gratitude and learnings that happened there. Uh, but that aside, now I'm back here in the United States for a little while, maybe six or seven weeks before we return to Germany to go to Bonn. Um, uh, but until that time, I am here and I do want to keep my promises to you in making some more videos. So this video that I'm making uh, has to do with the Star of Thirteen. The Star of the Thirteen is an ancient long-standing cartomantic layout. It's used with a variety of uh, cartomancy decks and in a number of styles. Uh, there are many ways to lay it out. There are many ways to read it. Of course, I'm just going to, as always, show you the way that I was taught to do it in Switzerland, the way that I do it. You may do it another way. That's perfectly fine, right? Again, uh, there is no dictator of the Kipper, and if there is, that's not me. So uh, that said, I just want to kind of explain the layout of the spread. It is 13 cards, which is why it's called a Star of 13. It is laid out kind of in a star pattern. Uh, those of you who've read Rachel Pollock's great book, The Forest of Souls, may remember that in that book she has a so-called spiral spread, uh, which I believe she calls God's Reading, and which she intends for sowing uh, or Halloween. And of course, that's a spread where you lay down one card and then in a spiral, you put down card uh, two, card three, card four, card five, card six, card seven, card eight, card nine. And then in the um, spaces between the two arms, once you have the arms kind of laid out, right, you have these cards that are placed diagonally, top and bottom in the arms here. So, um, this is a common layout. You've seen it uh, done a whole bunch of times. It's very common, I think, in Tarot. As I said, if you've read Rachel's book, you're very familiar with this layout. My layout generally is counterclockwise. I believe that Rachel lays her cards out clockwise, but you know, I'm not obsessed about that. You may lay them out clockwise or counterclockwise. 
uh, as you prefer, right? But uh, what I wanted to do was just explain briefly the layout to you, say that, you know, it's no big deal, it's a common layout, but I did want to show how to read it with Chiro Marchetti's deck. So that's what we're gonna do. The question will be about myself actually this time, and it'll be about the outcome of my travels, right? I'm very interested in what the fruit of my travels will be and how I can make the most of this really wonderful experience that I was able to have, um, which so many people contributed out of the kindness of their heart to make sure that it was a wonderful experience. And I, again, I'm just so grateful. So we're gonna do this video like we've done all the other videos. In a minute, I'm just gonna be quiet. We're gonna go to a static voiceover portion and I'm just gonna show you the picture of the deck and we're just gonna go through the actual mechanic uh, of reading you know, uh, as we normally do. It shouldn't be too long. Hopefully this won't be another 40 minute video as it was for the Grand Tableau. Uh, so again, thank you so much uh, for watching. Again, thank you for your patience and waiting. And I'll see you on the other side in the static portion voiceover part of the video. Thanks so much. See you soon. Hi, it's Fortune. And here we are, as I like to say, on the other side in the static video portion of the Star of 13 with Chiro's Kipper deck. So you may want to pause the video here and lay out your own set of cards in the same uh, layout. You may want to grab your notebook and your pencil so you can take notes and follow along. Of course you don't have to do this but it's a great way to learn and I always highly encourage that. So um, go ahead and get that together and meanwhile I'll go ahead and I'll talk about the cards and how I laid them out. So of course the Kipper uh, starts with the Significator and as you may recall from the first portion of the video the question here is what will be the outcome of my trip to Germany and what fruits can I reap from that? So this is uh, my question here for the Star of 13. Now, uh, because it's a question about a trip, a question about a journey, I started with Kipper 10, the journey card, as a significator. And as you can see, I laid that right in the middle. The uh, horizontal row looks like a line of five, and then the vertical column uh, looks also kind of like a, a standard sort of, you know, column as we might see in a grand tableau. But I did, as I said, lay this out in a spiral. Uh, now, you know, I'm not one particularly to tarotize these cartomantic decks. Obviously, if I wanted to read the tarot, I would just read the tarot. But I did uh, make the analogy to uh, Rachel Pollock's uh, spiral layouts um, and so this is how I just wanted to go ahead and rehearse the way that I had laid the cards out. So the first card I put down was 10, Journey. The second card was 34, Occupation. Then card 18, Child. Then card 27, Unexpected Income. Then card 38, Toil and Labor. Then card 16, Thoughts or His Thoughts. Then card 9, Change then card 35, Pathway, then card 6, Mature Female, or as I some, sometimes like to say, the Barrenness. Then uh, I laid out card 19, Coffin, as one of the diagonal cards, card 32, Despair, as another diagonal card, and then card 26 as the Great Fortune card there, and then the last card I laid out was 30 judication. So you can see I followed the spiral and then I, I did my usual diagonal crossing at the corners. All right, so I hope that explains how the cards are laid out. Now let's talk about the simple mechanics of how to read the cards. So the first horizontal row I read as I would normally read a line of five. So this means I'm going to pair the end cards, pair the two cards uh, as mates on the other end, and then pair them the cards that surround the central card. And uh, if you don't remember how I do this, you can go back and look at my line of five video that I made um, when we first started this Kipper journey with Chiro, or you can just go ahead and follow along as I do it now. 
So as you can see, if we pair the end cards, that would be Kipper 16 Thoughts and Kipper 35 Pathway, right? My thoughts really are concerned about what's going to be the outcome of my trip, what the fruits of my trip are for the next one or two years. Remember, pathway can sometimes mean two years waiting. I generally have the experience that it means a time in ex excess of one year you know, sometime between one and two years. So that's kind of the time frame that we have uh, discovered for this reading and that we are seeing portrayed here in the cards. Then, uh, of course, we, we can pair card uh, 34, Occupation, with card 27, Unexpected Income. Uh, to me, that would normally talk about some kind of work contract or change in work that I would... Uh, get more money than I had thought from a new kind of work, a new kind of occupation. Um, and of course, that is something, in fact, that could, I suppose, happen. One of the things I talked about with the curator and head archivist of the German Playing Card Museum, uh, Dr. Annette Kuger, was whether we should write uh, a book together about that beautiful uh, Tarot de Marseille, the Angelo Valle, uh, with some other people so that everybody would write like a chapter. So we would have five or six people writing different chapters about this beautiful and historic deck. And that was something that she seemed, you know, possibly kind of interested in. So that's something that I certainly would like to do. And um, I'm interested to see that kind of there um, in the cards. So uh, that's sort of, you know, like all the pairing. And in fact, this was a journey that was about my career, about my occupation. And, um, you know, it was also about a way that I could uh, work with my financial situation and possibly make use of the trip in terms of, you know, my occupation. So I, I find that first line of five to be very on point and to be very insightful. Now let's take a look at the cards that are above. Remember, often the Lenormand, particularly in A Star of Thirteen, the cards that are above the significator talks about what the uh, trip is about, what the significator is about, or if it's a person card, what's on the significator's mind. So as you can see here, the cards that are above the journey card are card six, mature female, or as I like to say, baroness, with 38, toil and labor. And so certainly uh, that is in fact what, what happened. That was what the trip was about. I did meet an older, very educated, and extremely helpful lady uh, the card expert, Dr. Annette Kuhr, and I did spend a lot of toil and labor, um, card 38, uh, really digging through the archives, and it did require a lot of preparation. I had to send a list of 50 decks I wanted to look at in advance, and of course I had to take extensive notes and do extensive research not only before I went, but while I was there, and then my research will be continuing now that I am back. So then let's look at the cards that are below. This would be card 18, child, and card 9, change. Now these, these are often uh, what is repressed, what you don't want to talk about, you know, uh, or something that you can control depending on the nature of the question and the nature of the uh, spread. So, uh, you know, depending on the context. So let's talk about this. Um, obviously, you know, I am hoping for something new. I am hoping for some kind of uh, beneficial um, outcome, right? So that would be, you know, a, a, a new avenue of work if we were to write this book with chapters about this Tarot de Marseille deck. And it would be a big change from what I'm doing now. So that's not only what I might be afraid of, right? I have a very comfortable uh, lifestyle right now. I'm very, you know, happy. Uh, traveling all around, doing the various things that I do, and seeing clients and reading cards for people. They seem to uh, derive a lot of benefit from that, and I certainly enjoy helping people uh, create their futures and change their behavior for themselves, by themselves, uh, using cards as a mirror. Of course, if we were to go into a different direction with this TDM project, then that would be a big change for me, and I would have to really sit and think about, you know, how that would affect my practice and how that would affect my travel. So, 
you know, that is something that could be scary and that may lead me in a different direction than the one that I think I'm going to go. So let's go ahead then and, and talk um, about uh, the diagonal cards. So I like to see the diagonal cards in the Star of 13 in a couple of ways. Some people, depending on the question, will read these as, you know, the uh, cause of the matter, the past, so to speak, and some people will read these as the possible outcome, you know, if you take your best decisional action. But um, in this case, you know, I don't read them that way. I don't think it's appropriate for the context of this question. To me, this seems these four cards seem to be more about my own anxieties and my own hopes. And so that's how I'm going to read them about the things that I need to know about myself and the feelings that I need to get in touch with and process. So here we can see uh, that if we want to look at uh, the first set of two diagonal cards, that would be Coffin 19 and card 32, Despair. We can see how that might suggest that this new avenue, in fact, would be very beneficial for me and that I could end my anxiety about making such a large change and going in a new direction, right? How I shouldn't have anxiety about that change, how how it might be beneficial for me to really think through the various benefits of pursuing this new uh, avenue of writing this book with other people about the Angela Valla TDM and the benefits of that. Now, when we talk about the benefits of that, right, then um, we look at card 30, adjudication, and card 26, great fortune. And so that seems like to do so uh, would be, in fact, a very positive decision, right? So in short, it suggests that instead of being so tentative about this possibility, I should really sit down, make a plan, walk through that plan, pursue that, contact the other people I'm interested in working with, or find the people who might be interested in working with me, Right, and really, you know, uh, go ahead and lay this out for myself as it could, in fact, be very beneficial. So, I find this, uh, this reading very helpful. Um, it often, you know, we are all people are, are you know, uh, anxious about change, right? We all, you know, have ambiguous feelings or uncertain feelings about. Uh, how various options may affect our lives, what's really best for us. We often have to sort of, you know, work with our own motivation and think about uh, what kind of changes we're willing to make and how we can make them to be the most beneficial uh, for ourselves, for our loved ones, and also uh, support ourselves as we go through you know, the big process of change, which always, always takes time. And it's natural to have some hesitation when you consider making these kinds of changes. So um, that's the general reading, and that's how I would interpret that. I hope the mechanics made sense to you. Again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me on my social media. I'm more than happy to talk through uh, other examples of this spread or any of the other spreads I've done already uh, if you're interested in doing so. And again, thank you so much for your patience and interest in the work that I have done with my beautiful co-authors on Chiro Marchetti's uh, Kipper Deck. And if you don't have uh, Chiro's Kipper Deck, I think that he has sold out of them by now, please um, go ahead and start studying it. Watch the videos. Uh, take your own notes. Practice with another Kipper Deck that is more accessible, perhaps, such as the Mystical Kipper or even the original Kipper. Uh, that you can often order from Book Depository because a commercial version of this will be coming out possibly sometime within the next year or in about a year's time. And so that way you'll have practice and fluency and you'll be ready for it. So thanks so much uh, for listening. Thanks for your patience. I really uh, appreciate and am grateful uh, for the positive response I've received for all the videos. Uh, and I will keep making some more. Again, give me three or four days. I've just gotten back, and so I do need some time to unpack, see some clients, catch up. But I will uh, be making a new video of it for you very soon. So thanks so much, and until then, have a great day.